This is a short documentary video, 12 minutes long, about some recent changes at Eton College and the sacking of Will Noland. Windsor Castle is a royal residence in the English county of Berkshire and embodies almost 1,000 years of architectural history. The original castle was built in the 11th century after the Norman invasion by William the Conqueror. Windsor is situated on the River Thames and on the opposite bank of the river, connected by Windsor Bridge, is the historic town of Eton. The land that is now Eton once belonged to the manor of Queen Edith, wife of Edward the Confessor. In 1440, Henry VI chose this as the location for his new college, Eton College. Workmen moved into Eton to build the chapel. All the land immediately around the hamlet was granted to the college, which stopped further growth. By 1925, the town was described as more commercial than residential with most of the buildings, apart from the school itself, belonging to businesses serving the schoolboys. Eton is an independent full boarding school for boys aged 13 to 18 years, which means pupils live at the school seven days a week. Eton has educated prime ministers, world leaders, Nobel laureates, award-winning actors and generations of aristocracy, having been referred to as the chief nurse of England's statesmen. In the past, Britain fought bravely against subjugation, totalitarianism and dictatorship, and these historic buildings and indeed former pupils have played a substantial part in a national narrative based on Christian values, democracy and freedom of speech. A college is not just buildings, it is more importantly an ongoing community of people dedicated to not only excellent pedagogy and education but also up to upholding the values of the institution itself. It is in this last respect that Eton has changed almost beyond recognition. But let's consider a bit of background first. Like every other academic institution, government body, council or corporation, there is a kind of political correction madness that appears to have affected almost every cell of our national body. What started in the 1960s with a very legitimate focus on issues such as racism, sexism and social justice has emerged to be something altogether more different. As the Western world became awakened to these issues, the word woke emerged as a new slang term for social awareness in the United States, as in the phrase, I was sleeping, but now I'm woke. After two generations, this ideology became a cornerstone of our universities, but there comes a point with every revolution when it disconnects from its original ideals and new forms of oppression and domination occur. In the headlong rush to be politically correct, Western academia has lost a great deal of its credibility by trying to legitimise an anti-intellectual, anti-freedom of speech stance with new departments such as gender studies engaged in wholesale ideas laundering. The orthodoxy of woke, a kind of neo-religious fundamentalism, is inculcated into our young people by zealous believers and features emphatically in almost every school policy and aspect of the academic curriculum. Five years ago, the stewards of this great college appointed a new headmaster, Simon Henderson, or Trendy Hendy. Interestingly, the opening statements claims the school is committed to independent thought, but as we shall see, the independence part does not stretch as far as to tolerate a questioning approach to woke ideology, particularly from a member of staff. 
One of his earliest and most ingenious appointments was Hales Osborne as Director of Inclusion, a newly created role. Here are some excerpts from the school website. Did Eden celebrate diversity when you first arrived? No, I don't think it did. Obviously there have always been gay people at Eton, as everywhere. The school wasn't any more homophobic than anywhere else. Of course, the Director of Education Inclusion has quite a tough job because the pupils of Eton are not actually women and not many are black. So the only route to the holy grail of woke victimhood is for the boys to declare themselves as gay or trans. Here we have a tweet from Hales. The flags are out for Eton Pride Week. A week of talks and activities to reflect on and celebrate pride. Eton is proud to support International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia and we look forward to celebrating Eton Pride in June. And then the headmaster, Simon, replies. On International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, it is so important that we work together to continue to make our schools ever more compassionate. Another online explanation from Hales. What we try to get across is that these prejudices come from the institutions around us. Prejudice doesn't come from inside us. We're not wicked people. We absorb these ideas from books, television, street names and even statues. When I look at the statues being pulled down, I think if we were judging most of these men only on the attitudes to women, there would hardly be any left standing. Hales is obviously fine about pulling down statues. Now that's a great example to pupils, isn't it? She continues. We need to do more on race now. Black History Month will be less about people coming in to lecture us and more about the boys discussing their own experiences on International Day against homophobia, biphobia and transphobia. Of course, not every member of staff has been entirely happy with this kind of progression and recently Eton College was the centre of some controversy. The row started after a member of staff, Mr Nolan, who had been at the school for nine years, posted a lecture online named The Patriarchy Paradox, which questioned radical feminists and praised the historical and societal impact of men. The lecture, which was not shown to students, was prepared as part of the school's perspectives classes for older pupils to consider different viewpoints. He was refused permission to screen it directly to pupils after concerns were raised about its contents. Mr Nolan responded by posting the video on his own personal YouTube site and was fired after he repeatedly refused to take it down. He has attracted widespread support from current and former pupils ever since, with many writing directly to the school to protest and criticising the school's apparent lurch towards pursuing a woke agenda, silencing opposing views. Mr Nolan is being dismissed for having a different view to the view of the majority. Mr Nolan's dismissal presents as a gross abuse of the duty of the school to protect the freedoms of the individual. It was recently revealed that Eton College tried to report Mr Noland to the Anti-Terrorism Prevent programme, but it was referred back because it did not meet the threshold. Mr Noland made the comment, So something that many colleagues and parents considered an excellent stimulus for debate is also terrorism? Will Noland has been a respected teacher at the school for nine years and has a wife and five children. They will lose their school accommodation and livelihood as a result of his dismissal. His crime? He did not acquiesce to the denigration of men, the self-loathing for our culture and beliefs, the headlong lemming rush of woke indoctrination. He valued the centuries of meaningful Western traditions which are now being swept away and eaten as one of the last bastions of defence has crumbled. We don't need a foreign power to knock on the door, it's wide open, as over the last decade a kind of thought totalitarianism has taken root, facilitated by our own media and government. Woke does not seem to feature in successfully emerging economies, 
as their governments and education systems have more sensible and rational priorities as we become weaker and broken. Consider China, for example. Like many other countries, it is making huge strides in terms of its influence abroad, based on the increasing dynamism of its economy. This is underpinned by an education system that is producing entrepreneurs, scientists, engineers and professionals that are building a unified and visionary future that involves a strong economic, industrial and military base. In contrast, the West appears to be determined to fragment and destroy itself with the deluded youth culture of individual self-obsession, national self-loathing and racial fractionalization. When totalitarianism comes knocking at our door, the governors of Eton should not be surprised that there are no defenders amongst us, and indeed, nothing left to defend. So I need you more than ever I need your hand in this resistance If we're going to go You are